Welcome to Auburn University's Continuing Education Program, brought to you by the School of Fisheries, Aquaculture, and Aquatic Sciences, the Alabama Cooperative Extension System, and the United Soybean Board. Today's topic is feed management for shrimp. If you think about aquaculture, it's a very complex business with many facets. One of the most important elements of a successful operation is feed management. It influences all aspects of production from the hatchery to the final product. Understanding proper feed management is critical for a successful operation. Feeding programs are critical as a feed represents the largest variable cost and a major factor influencing water quality of the culture system as well as survival and growth of the shrimp. To understand the basics of feed management, you need to understand that feeding practices and nutrition go hand in hand. Remember, the diet is worthless unless you use the proper feed and is properly applied. Feeding programs start with the proper storage of the feed. When feed is received, you need to confirm the type, quantity, and inspect for damaged bags. As with food at your home, it must be properly stored and used on a first-in, first-out basis. As you can see on the bottom photo, there are broken bags and storage is disorganized. Feed should be well organized and properly stacked to allow circulation of the air around the feed. This reduces the chances of moisture migration within the bag, creating moldy feed. Proper storage also provides better access to all of the feed. You will also want to minimize inventory based on your facility's needs. As a manager, you need to account for site-specific conditions because all ponds and all farms are not the same. You need to adjust feeding based on historical results for a given pond or facility. Remember, all feed inputs represent nutrients that in turn affect water quality. As a manager, it is better to anticipate problems instead of having to respond to a disaster. So if you're having or anticipate a water quality related problem, why not plan ahead and reduce nutrient inputs by backing off on the feed? For example, if it's overcast and expected to stay that way, feed less because the DO is low and will continue to get lower. Feeding will only add to the problem. Although you may not think about it, Natural productivity is a valuable source of nutrients. Many producers view natural productivity as a problem and not as a resource. Quite often we forget that natural productivity is a wonderful food source that we don't always utilize. There are a number of studies demonstrating the benefits of natural productivity, and here are a few examples. Outdoor tanks that are filled with pond water already contain natural food and mimic pond conditions. You can then try different feed management strategies. In this example, we offered different levels of shrimp feed to see how the shrimp grew. The graph shows that even with no added feed, the shrimp grew up to 2 grams, confirming that natural food is available. Then, of course, as we added more food, they grew larger. As another example, natural foods are also found in high-density culture systems where bacteria and algae are produced to control the water quality. In a bioflock study at Texas A&M University, small shrimp were reared at high density and had exceptionally low feed conversion ratios, or FCR. The feed conversion ratio is the amount of feed it takes to produce one unit of shrimp. In this example, feed is restricted so that the shrimp consume natural foods that are present in the system. As you can see, the feed conversion ratio is around 0.7, which is considerably lower than the 1.2 to 1.4, which would be expected if they were only consuming the prepared feed. Management techniques designed to keep natural productivity in the ponds provides a good food source and reduces the exchange of water, which also improves biosecurity and reduces pumping costs. 
Now that we understand the interactions between feed management and natural productivity, let's take a closer look at concepts for good management. Feed management is not based on guesswork. It is based on facts, collected data, and observations of feeding as well as the manager's experience. Improper feed management results in increased cost, nutrient loading, which creates water and sediment problems, as well as excess organics serve as a reservoir for pathogens. To understand good feed management, we need to understand how shrimp naturally feed. As you can see, shrimp will grab the feed and tear it into small pieces prior to putting it in their mouth. If a small quantity of feed is offered, the shrimp will carefully consume all of the feed. If there is a lot of feed, they tend to be messy eaters, leaving small chunks of feed uneaten. This uneaten feed results in poor conversion of feed to shrimp, wasting money and fouling the water. Shrimp are not like us. They don't eat just a few times a day. They are natural grazers eating numerous small meals. This graph shows that the longer feed is available, the more they will consume. If one feeding is provided, they only consume a small quantity of feed. If two feedings are provided, they eat and consequently grow even more. But to get maximum consumption and growth, numerous feedings need to be provided. There are a number of tools available to help managers determine the appropriate amount of food to offer to the shrimp. These include feed tables, feed trays, but most people use a combination of methods. So let's start with feed tables. This is one of the most common methods. The table will specify the quantity of feed required for a given size animal. The tables only work for a specific temperature growth rate, and feed type, which are seldom specified. You also need to know survival, which is often hard to determine. And when was the last time you saw a shrimp read a feed table to find out how much they were supposed to eat? Here's an example of a feed table. The problem I find with most feed tables is that for large shrimp, they often overestimate feed input, which results in overfeeding. Let's look at an example for a 12 gram shrimp. The feed table indicates 3% body weight or 0.36 grams per day of feed or 2.5 grams per week per shrimp. So if the shrimp, let's say, were growing at a slow rate of 1 gram per week, we would have a feed conversion of 2.5. If the shrimp were growing extremely fast at, let's say, 2 grams per week, our feed conversion would be 1.3. If we think about it, the feed alone should produce a feed conversion of around 1.3. So if any natural foods are available, the feed conversion should be lower than 1.3. So even under the best of conditions, this feed table is overfeeding. Feed tables are a good tool, but they need to be adjusted for specific site conditions. As an example, the red line indicates values from a standard feed table. The yellow line is our adjustment of the feed table to minimize overfeeding at our facility. The results of the improved feed management is that we have reduced the feed conversion ratio and improved production and lowered costs. No matter how we determine the ration size, we still need to deliver it to the shrimp. This can be done by hand or mechanical distribution like a feed blower. Another way to manage feed is with feed trays which are placed in the pond. The advantage of using feed trays is that they can be used to judge consumption. Either part or all of the feed can be placed on the tray. The system is used by a lot of producers and considered a very good way to gauge feed intake or consumption. However, sometimes the results can be misleading. What makes this system complicated is the number of trays required and the manpower to manage the trays. There are a lot of questions in terms of how to manage these systems that you must answer for your own farm. 
a number of studies have been conducted looking at feed trays confirming they are a good management tool. However, all of the feed should not be placed on the feed trays. If part of the feed is broadcast, the shrimp will have better access to the feed and perform better. One of the latest innovations in shrimp feed management is automatic feeders that can provide feed 24 hours a day. This means we can provide small meals that are consumed quickly, improving feed conversion and growth. Let's look at an example of an automatic feeder. The feed falls from the hopper onto a spinning plate that distributes the feed in a circular pattern. The feed falls in the bottom of the pond where shrimp are go going about their normal activities. Once the feed falls into the water, it attracts the shrimp. Within a few minutes, the shrimp have moved to the feed and are going to work on their next meal. The newest advance is linking automatic feeders with a feedback mechanism. In the case of the AQ1, the feedback is through noise produced by the shrimp as they consume the feed. As with all automated feeding systems, the feeders range in size and capacity with the largest holding around 200 kilograms of feed. These systems are often mounted on piers or placed on floats. These systems do require electricity, so they need to be operated on the grid with electricity or off the grid with solar power. This graph represents feed delivery over a 24-hour period. It shows that the feeding activity is variable throughout the day and night. The system continually tests for feeding response and only offers more feed when the shrimp appear active. This means less feed is wasted, and at the same time, we are able to feed more feed. Results of numerous farms in several countries have reported improvements in feed conversion, growth rates, and survival, making for a more efficient operation. Let's look at an example of shrimp grown in ponds. In this case, shrimp were fed by hand twice a day. We also offer the same quantity of feed six times a day using an automatic feeder or we provided as much feed as a shrimp would consume based on feedback using the AQ1 system. You can see that the hand feeding produced good results, but spreading the same quantity of feed over six feedings further improved growth. The best growth was observed when feeding based on shrimp activity using the AQ1 system. Feed conversion ratio, or FCR, is the amount of feed used to produce one unit of shrimp. As you can see from the figure, feed conversion ratios for the AQ1 pond was slightly higher. This means a slight increase in the cost for feed, but this is easily offset by the added growth and biomass. In all cases, feed inputs were well managed, resulting in low feed conversion ratios across all styles of feeding. As you can see, we had a slight improvement in total harvest with the automatic feeder. This treatment also had larger shrimp than that of the hand feeding, again demonstrating an advantage of automatic feeders. The biggest advantage was observed with the AQ1 automated feeding system, with the shrimp and final biomass about 50% higher than that of observed with the traditional feed management. Remember, we only applied these approaches for the last half of production, so further improvements would be seen if these techniques were used earlier in the production cycle. Clearly, automation of feed management has a lot of advantages and should be encouraged as it increases growth and improves final biomass production, all leading to potentially more income. Of course, what you do on your farm will depend on what resources are available the key is to maintain good feed conversion ratios, growth, and final harvest biomass that is optimized for your situation. Now that we have reviewed the basics of feed management, you can see that record keeping is critical. No one method works for everyone, and quality data is necessary for success. With nutritious feed, stored and managed properly, 
the overall performance of the farm is improved. The final measure of good management is a successful harvest, creating a consistent, nutritious, and quality product for the seafood market is the ultimate goal of any producer.